I'm excited to be here. Glad to see so many people. And I'm just going to start right in sharing the screen and then I will talk us all through a few things that we're going to be doing. So just do want to start off mentioning that the presentation tonight is based on a chapter that I wrote in a book which just came out last month. Um, if you're interested, it's about journaling. There's all sorts of other creativity coaches and people who have contributed to this book. So if it's something that you are interested in exploring, you can always just get in touch with me um, and ask me about it. We're going to be talking about the cycles of creativity tonight and how that cycle of producing a creative work can also be mirrored by the progression of the seasons and our connection with the natural world. So if we start off looking at the pinkish purplish words down at the bottom, you've got germination, assimilation, completion and release. And so if you sort of think of this a little bit like how a seed needs to germinate, so you've got an idea for a creative project. Sometimes those ideas come really fast. I know there's sort of this myth of creative inspiration always happening in a burst. Not necessarily. Some things take a long time to kind of gel. So there's the germination phase of a creative idea. And then there's the assimilation phase where it's, kind of making itself a little bit more clear in your mind. You're connecting to it, it's connecting to you. Both of these stages, all four of the stages, really there's no specific time frame for any of these. It might depend on what you're doing, what the creative work is, whether or not it's something that you do on a regular basis or if it's something that's brand new. So after you've assimilated the idea, that's when you start working on it for real. And at some point, again, who knows exactly the progression of time, you're going to be completing that project and then releasing it out into the world for other people to see. These don't have to match up exactly with a winter, spring, summer, fall, but this is essentially what tonight is about, is giving you a new framework to think about your work and how to interact with it. And we can always come back to the slide at the end if people have questions and I can explain it a little bit more. Tonight, as always, whenever I do a workshop, I just want to point out that this is for you. People are creative in really different ways. We're all unique. So you're choosing the frame for what information you're going to work with tonight, what's important to you, and how you work with it for your own creative process. So just think about what works for you, and anything that doesn't make sense, discard. So basically how we're going to go through this evening is taking a small bit of time for people to either write or reflect on their own response to some of the prompts, either writing or photography or both, whichever strikes you. And then we're going to have some time to talk about it and to share. You do not have to share if you do not want to, but I open, you know, it's open for you to do so. So in order to get the most out of tonight, I want you to try to think about something that you are engaged with, some creative project. It could be something that you're stuck on. It could be something that you're, you know, everything's going just fine. You're running with it and everything's coming together. You could have just completed something, but spend about maybe five minutes or yeah, four usually works about best. Five is sometimes a little long. So I'm gonna just turn on the timer. If you do have paper there, jot down a few notes and just think about where am I? What is, is calling me? And can you link it up with one of these stages? Are you in a germination stage, assimilation? Are you nearing completion or having just completed? Or are you releasing it out into the world? Okay.
just about another minute. Okay, and as we're wrapping up, if anybody wants to put in the chat a comment about what they discovered or where they are, which stage they feel like they might be in, you're welcome to do so. Okay. Why don't we just move on? Everyone's got an idea of a creative project and where they're at with things. So the first season that we're gonna talk about is winter. And again, this is a framework. So regardless of what is outside your window right now, it's about how you're connecting with a creative project, where you are with the creative project. And so often we get stuck. We feel like, I mean, so many artists go through these ups and downs and the downs can be pretty severe for some people. And this is meant to allow you to try to think about what seeds go through. Some seeds need the cold to be able to build up their strength or the idea of finding the light in a season that can sometimes feel not as friendly as spring or summer or fall. If you allow something to germinate in the darkness and give it the time that it really needs, sometimes we're pleasantly surprised. I myself have had many experiences where all of a sudden something that I just didn't understand why I wasn't working on it, why am I not doing this, I want to do this, it wasn't its time. It was still either germinating or I was still assimilating it and when it was time, it blossomed. So what I'd like to try to do right now, oh, a, cu a couple people, let me just see what people wrote in chat and then we'll move on to the, oh, okay, good to know. I got two, two people in the completion stage. So winter won't be as connected to what you're talking about right now. So for winter, I want you to try to write again for a few minutes and then we'll open it up to a brief conversation about the winter phase or the germination phase. So for right now, try to write of the blue of an icicle when it shimmers. Think of letting the light into your project. Your project may be encased in ice, but where can you find the sun or the blue or the light of winter? So I'll turn on the timer again, just for four minutes. And then we'll try to have a quick conversation about winter.
Do you, hon? Again, just about another minute. If anybody wants to put anything in chat, again, you're welcome to do so. Okay, so that's time. Did anybody discover anything that they want to share with anybody else in the group? If so, just unmute yourself. So I was starting with like a technical writing approach. I wrote down winter slash germination, how you're connecting to a creative project think about what seeds of creative process need to go, what they need to go through in order to germinate. So kind of creating a bit of foresight or trying to. Uh, finding the light in your project, seeing the light, shining a light, looking at dynamics in a still fashion, mm. using the stillness to research aspects of a project, and ice picking through glacial mind caverns, seeing which piece of potential you wanna pick at first. Oh, interesting. The glacial caverns comes, it, that makes me just sort of think of the ideas are there waiting for you to discover them, right? They're, they're frozen down there, but they're, they are accessible. Yes. Great. Wonderful. Thanks, Kat. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to share anything? All right. Well, that's fine. We can just move on to the next one. So after your ideas have germinated for whatever period of time, we were talking about the assimilation process, and there's a lot of different components to the assimilation process. Some people think of that as a part of the process that really happens before you're actively working, where you just really need to be getting all the different pieces of it and connecting with it. Other people define the assimilation process as really including when you're doing the work. So again, use your own frame, what makes sense to you. So during the spring, when you want your project to be growing, to be beginning, it's coming into being. So the writing prompt for this one is just write the first five words that come to mind when you see this image. Where is your creative new growth? In what state are your projects? So are they seeds? Are they new growth? Are they beginning plants? Whereabouts are you and where is your creative work?
about one more minute. Okay, does anybody have anything that they'd like to share? This was a really good good exercise. This um, made me think about project coming into being. Mm -hmm. So I wrote, uh, what state is your project in? The diversity is at the helm steering the outcome. Have all aspects affecting growth been accounted for? Is there a sense of natural ease integrated as opposed to stiff control? Is there an, an allowance of space and time to catch the unexpected? Mm. To create room for what will naturally shift over time? Is there an awareness of what's near and what's far away and how those relationships will dance together? Lovely. Wow, there's a lot of things that you mentioned that really did make me picture standing in the garden you know you've just stuck that little seed in the gar in the ground you have no idea how big the plant is going to be what you know sometimes i don't even remember what color plant. you know so that it's an unexpected growth right it depends on how how much time and effort i'm paying to my garden but um i also really like the diversity idea because especially looking at this field and just not exactly knowing what's planted here. And that's where there's that allowance for, oh, I might have germinated the idea, but that doesn't mean that the project emerges exactly the way you first think when you've got your idea. Yeah, there's a lot to, a lot to sit with there. Great, thank you, Kat. Anybody else? You're welcome to unmute. Okay, so just a few more thoughts about spring and the assimilation process. So a lot of what we're looking at tonight, you can do for yourself so that you can come up with your own photo prompts or your own writing prompts if you're feeling stuck when you're going through a project. If you identify with a specific phase and you know that you're in the assimilation phase and you, you're trying to figure out, well, where is it going? How is it going to grow? What is it going to look like? Sometimes either literally going out in nature and going for a walk or doing some sort of exercise like we're doing right now can let you get a little bit more clarity about where exactly are you. One of the biggest things that seems to happen to a lot of people, you know, the people that I coach talk about everybody lumps things together into one step, but a seed, new growth, you know, when you've got your little seedlings, those first few leaves aren't even the real leaves and they don't always exactly even look the same as the real leaves of the plant. So if you're able to be sit with what exact phase you're in, it can be easier to continue to move through your project. Okay, let's just see, we've got one more comment in the chat. Great, yes. So adina has got peace, vibrant, alive, nature, and green. Yeah, because your project is alive, right? You're, you're, it's there, you're, you're holding it, you're breathing life into it, it's interacting with you. And all of that, when we get stuck, we, we need ways to, to re-engage and find that again. And so having in your creative toolbox some ideas about how to get to that energy again and connect with that can be really helpful. Great, thanks, Dina. We'll move on to our next one. So summer and the completion phase. So the completion is a time of fruition when your project is reaching its natural end. Look around you at flowers that are in full bloom. 
look at all of the different components. So the sunflower on the screen here, usually we tend to look at a flower as a flower. There it is, look at the beautiful sunflower. But if you're able to break it down and look at all of the different parts, you realize how much work went into it and how intricate a, a work of art it is, basically. So I'll turn on the timer again. We'll do a little bit more writing. Just try to think about what it means to let yourself finish your work. A lot of people get to a certain point, they never actually finish. They're afraid of it. It's, it's a difficult step. So just play around with what it means to finish your work, to look at a flower in full bloom, to appreciate the colors and the beauty of both the world and your work. I'll set the timer to go now. about one more minute. Okay, anyone have anything they want to share or talk about in terms of summer or the completion phase? Thanks, Midori. Okay, um, uh, celebration of what has occurred, 
permission granted to take a step back and enjoy what you've brought to life. Mm -hmm. See what fell into a natural state of flow. Take notes on how this can be repeated and what needs a different approach. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I like that idea of sort of analyzing it. Like, how did it create itself? What grew and what might happen next time? Yep, awesome. Anyone else have anything? Um, I was just, when I was writing, I realized that when I am at the completion phase of a piece, sometimes I can get um, caught up in almost like not wanting it, the experience of making the piece the end. Yep. Then uh, that can kind of, so I was kind of writing about that, just like how you can be on a journey creating a piece of art or a painting and and wanting to like keep journeying with it, but knowing it needs to like stop at a certain point. So it's like, a, that's the kind of like dance. Yes, very much so. When I think about flowers, I mean, I know I keep coming back to this again, it just really helpful for me because I think of how the flower gets to a point where it, it can't stop. Like it just, it, it's done, it, there it is. It's like, here's my best day. And and it's it's a process of letting go of our work. Um, some other things that I've read about completion is, it is, it's a loss. There's a grief piece there that nobody really talks about because you're, you're caring for that work of art. And if you really truly reach the completion stage and you finish it, that piece of art's like letting go, right? The piece of art is gone. Mm -hmm. um, you're letting it out into the world and now it's a new relationship where it's other people are engaging with it, in it as opposed to just you. So yeah, there's a lot there. <laughs> it's a very deep subject. <laughs> Great, okay. Uh, let's see, anybody else have comments or? Okay, so let's move on to the last one. So we're at the release phase and connecting it to autumn or fall. Looking at the leaves that are fallen on the ground and they graced the tree during their seasonal life. You think of their colors now. You think of the green that they were during the springtime. Can you release your work into the world now that it is done? I'll turn on the timer for our four minutes.
about one more minute. Okay. Anybody have any comments they'd like to share? I have one, but it, this one's a short one. Okay. Um, see, a cicada uh, leaves a shell of its life. An artwork presents a shell of its creation, but the viewer is left unaware of the full life and only gets a peek. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. And it, it makes me think of how often we ask artists, well, what were you thinking at that moment? Or what was your process? What we, and so, sometimes we can't even answer. We just know that we created it, right? And there it is. Oh, that's, that's I like that. I'm gonna think some more about that. Thank you, Kat. Oh, I can comment too. Mm -hmm. When it comes into the, um, the time to release the work into the world, I always try to think of it as um, it coming into for full circle where yeah. it's being received by other people now so that it's received by the viewer and they have their own experience with it. So then it's kind of just passed on just like the cycles of nature and um, it integrates back into the collective consciousness or whatever you would like to think of it. Um, but when I finally came to, to understand that within my work, I had an easier time like letting it go. Mm. Because it's kind of, uh, it reminded me that my work is its own like wheel turning. And then when I release it, it just goes into the larger wheel of life. Mm -hmm. so as artists, we're just kind of turning and we're all creating to create um, and like give uh, away our work into the, that larger circle. So I kind of just had to like create a visualization for myself as an artist when I was in grad school because I had a hard time. Really, I just needed to figure out like why I was actually making work and then giving it, or giving it away or, or even exhibiting it. Um, so those are my thoughts on it. Mm. Yeah, it's almost like putting more energy back out into the world mm -hmm. and then allowing almost a mini little creative cycle to happen through the viewing experience as well. Yeah. And then kind of like letting go of, of what, you know, your intention was and creating it because it's going to be met by everyone's unique experience of their own life. Mm hmm which creates something altogether new. Right. Right, yeah. Yeah. So is it, is it like creating a bit of a fertilizer for the process, for the, the viewer or the collective conscious to then begin growing into a new cycle? Oh. Yeah, that's kind of how, I know that sounds like out there, but that's kind of how I... Oh. <laughs> it doesn't sound out there. It sounds, it sounds brilliant and... Uh, organic and like natural like that makes I, I i honestly struggled with this stage because all i could think of is like it's dead you won't see it you won't see the whole thing you'll see a part of it but you'll be missing and then you come in like that's that's a brilliant connection to make um thinking of creating the fertilizer for the next potential components of growth not knowing what growth will come from that but like allowing that that beginning of a decay to occur 
which carries the nutrients for the next cycle. That's brilliant, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, even looking at the leaves on the ground and picturing them getting drier and drier and then eventually becoming, right, the, the mulch for the winter. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, great. Nice stuff. So there's just one more slide, which is to use one way of using this framework on a regular basis in your life is if depends on what you see when you go outside. We all see different things. We all live in different environments. Some people will choose a specific natural object that they see on a regular basis and just observe it throughout the seasons. And that just becomes this foundational marker for them. So I just picked a bunch of trees. Obviously, these are not all the same tree to encourage you the next time you go out for a walk or the next time you're sitting, writing in your journal, looking out the window, whatever it is, try finding something that can become a relationship for you in nature. That's one object. And use that as the beginning of an observational practice to incorporate the seasons and nature even more deeply into your life than already is. I know for many of us, it's already very special and precious. Um, but this is an invitation to explore it even more. And that's it. I'm, I'm reachable here at MidoriCreativity.com or Midori at MidoriCreativity.com if you have more questions. And then we can open it up for a Q&A as Dina was talking about at the beginning. I, I appreciate the, um, the breakdown of the, the creative process and the metaphor of that breakdown uh, with the seasons and them naturally moving in a cycle. That's extremely in, enlightening for me because of, uh, I think, in systems. And I, I'm always trying to figure out how things are interconnected. But a lot of times I'll think beginning to end, not a continuation. Mm -hmm. and so that just really creates um, some thoughts for me to kind of reconsider or reapproach some of the processes I work with as having that sense of like what they fall into next as opposed to this constant like begin and begin end and and the labor for creating a process of a beginning to end is actually much more involved than thinking of it in a cyclical fashion mm -hmm. because it's like trying to stop inertia it's like trying <laughs> to create this sudden like you know very like Mark demarcation of this is going this way and it's going to start here and it's going to end here and, and that just you know in communication systems in project pipeline systems like it's a lot more laborious so this cycle is is very helpful I'm going to think about that more mm. in my work great thank I you have a, um, a question Midori just thinking of um, maybe some other people on the call that Let's say you're a beginning, big, like a beginner artist and you're, you want to explore the natural world. Are there any like tools or easy techniques to like start getting engaged with the natural world? I don't know if you have any advice for that or just kind of a, uh, would you choose a certain medium or how would you um, embrace that experience in an, in an artistic practice if you're just kind of beginning? Yeah, that's a good question. So honestly, I would probably do it not with a medium that I either knew I was good at or that I wanted to get good at. I would actually purposely choose something that was not my forte. Um, so well, I am not a good drawer at all, but I discovered this little series of books that it's, it's a pocket sized, so you can carry it with you. And they, the person has drawn things from the natural world, but there's blank space on the pages so that you can copy them on the page. You're not tracing it, you're just drawing your own. And there's a whole bunch of different versions of the book. And I have found that that, when I started doing that is, probably because I've had them for a while that's probably when I started paying way more attention when I was outside and it it opened up a pathway for me if I had gone out with my camera because I'm a photographer as well as a writer 
um, I would not have had that same experience. So it's like the Zen mind, beginner's mind thing <laughs> is first make the relationship with nature using, um, so you could use that tool, the drawing books. And if anyone's interested, I can look up the title. You can get in touch with me. Um, another way is just to think of yourself like a naturalist, a naturalist's notebook. And you can pretend you're back in elementary school and go out and collect a little flower and dry it or go out and get, you know, make yourself little assignments. I'm going to go look for four different color leaves today and see if you can find them. <laughs> I mean, you can now, now my teacher self is coming out. Um, so you, know, you guys might want to sign off. You're going to like find yourself back in kindergarten five minutes from now. Um, but it's, I do think that that is a an important first step because if you're a beginning artist and you're also trying to master the medium like you're learning to get good with your painting or whatever it is that you're doing then you're trying to do two skills at the same time and you're not paying as much attention to either one okay that's awesome cool that's very helpful thank you sure yeah, I appreciate the reminder of thinking as a naturalist and, and just taking in the information around you and um, just kind of be, it's like a way of grounding and being present to like reassess what's actually happening and make a decision from that as opposed to sticking in inside this potential future that's not here, we just have the moment. That's what that makes me think of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot more happening out there than we realize, too. <laughs> we make assumptions, right, about, oh, yeah, okay, I, I went down to the water. Well, how long did you sit there and look, and what did you actually see? And so you can also do a meditation practice that's connected to, you know, finding a different place to go meditate that's outside when the weather's good, obviously. Um, and that can also build that connection that you might be looking for. Sure. Oh, Kyle, sorry, it was so noisy there, <laughs> but you're good. All right, any other questions? Yeah, I didn't know if you could mention, I know you had that last slide, but where to find you. Yep, I'll put it in chat again. So it's midorycreativity.com, or you can just reach me at midori at midorycreativity.com. And happy to answer questions or provide some resources if you're looking for them. and. I hope everybody goes out for a lovely walk this evening and notices something new and different. Yeah. And good luck with all of your creative projects. Yeah, thank you so much, Midori. That was very, very helpful, especially in the summer. We can yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, just so everyone knows, this is recorded and all of our other co-creative sessions are recorded on our website. So you can um, check it out at cocreativenb.org if you want to tune in and and recap it. Um, and thank you everyone for joining. And again, follow up with any questions if you have any. And thank you for joining us. It's good to see everyone. <laughs>